Okay, so we are live. Um, welcome everyone to the this first uh, SCOMI webinar re related to the AMET, the Advocacy Medical Education Training. So my name is Pablo Estrella, I'm the SCOMI director. My name is Katerina Vima, I'm the liaison officer for medical education issues. My name is Marwan, and I'm your SCOMI Regional Assistant for the EMR. Hi, I'm Stancha. I'm a previous SCOMI Director and Liaison Officer. Awesome. So let me just get into the presentation. Okay, so let's start. Yes, thank you, Pablo. So I'll start with a brief history of the workshops that we had in SCOMI, the Standing Committee on Medical Education, uh, before the rest of this webinar starts. Um, so as my, some of you might know, I can say uh, started in 1951. And together with that, uh, also the Standing Committee on Medical Education, as well as professional exchanges and student health. So SCOMI was one of the first standing comedies that was there. Um, after that, throughout the years, SCOMI has done many different things, including holding several webinars. If you can go to the next one. Um, some of them were dedicated to a specific topic. So for example, a meeting that addressed access to medical training in Europe or uh, the Bologna process. And some of them were more thematic general workshops on capacity building, like uh, introducing school medians to what the global curriculum is, trying to find our, our general uh, stances on what a global curriculum should look like or changing healthcare through medical education. After that, uh, some of the standing comedy teams sat together and thought, okay, we've had uh, many different workshops throughout the years related to SCOMI and medical education to try to offer our, our, our members uh, capacity building. Um, but what if we try to create a three day, four day workshop uh, with a certain set of skills that we repeatedly offer to uh, anyone working in medical education, representing students or trying to influence curricula locally. Uh, and that is why in uh, 2012, there was a first discussion on whether or not such a workshop should start. And it was first held in 2013, uh, which then was called the Essential Skills in Medical Education Workshop for Students. Uh, it was first held in Tunisia in 2013. Uh, headed by the uh, liaison officer at that time, Agostinho Sosa, who uh, delivered it together with the people that were present there. Uh, and it was quite successful, which led to them trying to uh, offer this workshop, not only in that EMR meeting, but also uh, in all, all of the other regions as well as nationally. Um, and so there were a lot of people who participated in these workshops and got a certain set of skills in, in medical education, but we in the end, in our international team in 2013-14, we thought we now have a lot of people who are receiving basic training in medical education, which is really great, but we're seeing that the same people are delivering these workshops, so mainly the international teams. Uh, and at, at a certain moment, we will be uh, leaving SCOMI to do other things. So how do we keep capacity building going within SCOMI. And that's why in that term, we created a workshop called Training Medical ed Education Trainers at the TMAT, uh, as some of you might know it, to sort of both deliver uh, that basic set of skills that the ESMEs workshop had, but as well try to teach these participants that were there uh, how they could move this knowledge that they gained further. So how could they take what they learned in that four-day workshop, three-day workshop to their national level or eventually to the international level. Uh, and we felt that that was quite a big success. Uh, a lot of people were very happy and more TMETs came after the first one, which was held in 2014 in Taiwan. Uh, this is a family tree that we created in 2015 with already several workshops happening across the globe and former participants holding these workshops again uh, in different locations. 
and now if you look at the, the groups that exist there's over 300 i think uh, people that are involved in training medical education which is really great uh, and i think that uh, through this workshop we managed to fill that gap that we felt that we had in, in 2014 so more different people that are delivering trainings in medical education and continuing to grow in this um, but then if you if you give one more click uh, this was the situation that we had uh, in that term and i think now the question is we have a lot of new medical education trainers and now the current international team is thinking what are the current needs of SCOMI? do we already have a lot of trainers yes so what is it that we uh, that these trainers are feeling that they're still lacking or that they're not getting out of team at, and how can we fill that gap and i think that's where uh, the SCOMI international team tried to develop a new initiative that uh, that is what this webinar is all about. Um, thank you so much, Justine. Um, so now a little bit um, about the workshop. So as um, it was introduced right now, um, we have had a lot of teammates around the world since um, its beginning in, in back in, in some years ago. and. The, the new change that now we're introducing is the AMET. So um, some, some important thing to, to know is that we changed from advanced medical education training to advocacy in medical education training for this upcoming um, new workshop that, that it's gonna happen in um, the August meeting in, in Canada. So why we made this change of name? Basically because uh, we discussed inside um, with the international team, with other relevant SCOMI members. And we realized that advanced is a really um, difficult term to use in this kind of, of workshop, uh, because basically, as we will see, um, the AMET is not the second step of a TMET, but is an independent um, workshop. And uh, because of its objectives, um, we found that advocating for medical education it's a better term to use, and it's more accurate in um, in the term in, in regarding to uh, how the AMET is working. So at the moment, we have two official SCOMI workshops: um, the TMETs and the AMETs. Um, so some of the questions that um, are really common at this point, if is if there's a difference, or what's the difference between a TMET and an AMET, right? Um, so basically, since the beginning of the AMET, um, we realized that there were a lot of teammates going on around the world, but we needed some more advocacy and we needed some more um, uh, medical students that were able to do actions to advocate for in a local and national level. So that's why um, the AMET uh, has uh, as its goals or it's meant to be an outcome-oriented SCOMI workshop. Um, it does not graduate trainers as the friends of the TMET, so AMET participants will not get um, um, trainee, a, a, a trainer certificate, but of course we'll get the certificate of, uh, of attendance. And this is because we are aiming to initiate advocacy projects. Um, our idea is to give the tools, the necessary tools for um, to medical students to be able to identify their own um, local or national medical education um, issues and be able to advocate for that. So basically, um, as we will see later on, the AMET uh, has as it, its own objective um, to be able um, to give these tools we're mentioning so students can come with a really specific medical education issue or need from a local level and being able during these three days of workshop to develop um, their um, the, the, the plan of action to develop which stakeholders they will need. And together with the trainers and with their peers, they will be able to um, develop this um, action plan, action plan uh, for advocating in their own uh, medical education. So this is a, um, a really short background of how's the aim at working, why we decided to create, but it's really important to know that it is not the second stage of TMIT. It is not. Um, it is an independent workshop 
And the idea is that any medical student with a general um, medical education background will be able to, um, uh, to attend this workshop. All right, um, can, if we can change the slide. Thank you, Pablo. So um, just following up on what Pablo said and what we were envisioning the purpose of uh, aiming to be, we sort of developed the tools that uh, anyone interested in organizing an AMET would need, uh, because the vision is that AMET would be a very malleable workshop, a workshop that every facilitator and every team would be able to adjust to their own needs because its very purpose is to empower uh, both advocacy projects and other types of activities, both on a local and on a national level. So it's about uh, giving essentially exactly what tools that uh, the participants need cater to the, their very personalized um, plans and approaches to medical education and making sure that when they actually leave the workshop, they know exactly what they're supposed to do as a next step to turn their plans into a reality. Um, it's probably, I would say, the perfect junction between um, activity management and advocacy, uh, advocacy skills within the, the field of medical education. So for this purpose, we actually, and since we were discussing about AMET being an actual framework, we developed two, uh, two, uh, a set of two different tools. Uh, so one of them is actually the AMET framework analysis. And the second tool is the AMIT guidebook. The AMIT framework analysis is the most essential document. It outlines uh, the different topics that we are expecting to be discussed during the AMIT workshop. And then the guidebook is actually the, the document that should uh, work as, a, as should work complementarily to the framework and provide you all the necessary background information on what each topic is about and some interesting resources as well. Uh, the reason that we developed the image framework uh, is actually because while we want the workshop to be very, to be very malleable and adjustable to each its facilitators and each group's needs, each local committee or its national uh, member organization or even in the general assemblies as well, uh, but at the same time we also want to have something that could be easily measured and regulated. We always want to follow the SMART principles. So what is exactly the image framework? The AMIT framework is a set of five building blocks across five different topics, and each block contains specific, um, th specific themes in medical education. Uh, so essentially, consider this like building your own Lego, I would say, structure. You take some uh, topics from each block, and essentially at the end of the day, you have built an entire workshop. We separated it into a five by five format so that it's easily remembered. You can keep it in your mind. And we have a set of five blocks with five topics in each one. So it's a total of 25 different uh, boxes. But to keep it easier, have that five by five system in your mind. The five actual, oops, we lost the image. The five building blocks are block A, which includes the very basic topics the most integral topics in medical education that we always talk about and we always address. The second block is about topics related to quality. The third topic is humanities. Uh, the third block is humanity topics. The fourth one is about empowerment. And the fifth one is about other topics that we couldn't otherwise group in the, main, in the, in the four main blocks, but we still consider them very important for medical education. I have to, to give a disclaimer that some there might be some overlaps in topics or some may could potentially fit in an area, but to keep it more easy to remember and to keep it more simplified, we're going with the five by five approach because it's it just makes our lives much, much easier and the lives of the organizers as well. Uh, you can see, I hope it's quite clear in your in the presentation and uh, in your screens those topics and I will go through them a bit more in detail now. So in the basic topics, we have curriculum planning and development, assessment and evaluation, teaching and learning, educational strategies or educational models and advocacy and campaigning. So four out of those are the basic topics that were included in, uh, that are included in the team as well. And we added advocacy and campaigning because it's, it's one of the most important components of the work that we are doing in medical education and it's, Essential. It's it's extremely it's quintessential 
I would say, uh, to our standing committee. When it comes to quality, and this is about ensuring the quality of education uh, and how we as students can, can actively participate in that, we have uh, research in medical education as a tool for adva advancement. Uh, we have quality assurance. We have accreditation and standards. We have evidence-based medicine and interprofessional education because these are all uh, mechanisms to increase the quality, actually. When it comes to humanities, we have more um, social-related topics, and these include ethics and moral dilemmas in medicine and medical education, professionalism and good practice, social accountability, health literacy in patient education, which is a topic that we haven't addressed so far much in, in SCOME, but we really think it's very important, and student burnout. Uh, which is something that relates very much to our mental health as medical students, which tends to suffer a lot. Uh, now, when it comes to empowerment, we have topics that are uh, more about uh, making sure that each participant feels able to enact change and to take a more active stance. Uh, these include the student representation and student involvement, external representation, and these two are different in the sense that they have a very different target group, uh, activity management, because again, we do want uh, people to come into the AIMED workshop with actual projects in mind or specific activities that they want to undertake. And this topic is very crucial in ensuring that we understand the structure of how to do that and how to approach uh, activities. We have youth leadership and we have, of course, continuous professional development. And for the final uh, building block, uh, the other topics, as we might say, we have included medical education and health policy. So what exactly should or is the interaction between uh, developing a health policy and the role of medical education in this process? We have some more interesting and I would say different topics than what we are used to, such as the history of medical education, where we're aiming to explore how medical education evolved throughout the years. Uh, we have medical education finances behind the numbers, which aims to explore what are the costs related to medical education and what a budget would include, uh, so as to be more informed in terms of advocacy or any other uh, uh, projects that we're undertaking, which includes money. Uh, we also have medical education across the world, which aims to discuss how uh, education is formulated in different countries, different regions. And we also have human resources for health, which is one of the most crucial points that we work in medical education, and we felt that it should definitely be included in the AMAT workshop, but it didn't entirely fit perfectly in any of the other four categories. Um, next slide. Actually, no, if you go back to the previous one. No. Anyway, um, so because we understand that these topics are quite a lot and it might be overwhelming at first sight, <laughs> yes. Uh, we also developed the AMET guidebook, as I mentioned, which is a quite thorough and comprehensive document that goes a bit into more detail and background on each topic, and it includes some resources for you to check. I think the link has been shared, and it will be shared after the webinar as well. But if you have any questions about any of the topics, uh, we have included several, uh, actually several, several uh, information about each one. So just make sure to take a look and go through it to get some more understanding. And the final point that I want to make is, as I said, we want to be able to measure and regulate the, out the quality and the outcomes of each AMAT workshop, and that's why we developed those tools. But how you, you can actually use them is that uh, we have made recommendations, and we, don't, we do not want you to take them as very strict rules because they really are recommendations for a maximum positive output on how to integrate this into your workshop. So if you're actually developing an AMIT workshop, we propose, for example, to include in your agenda three topics from block A, which is uh, the basic topics, two topics from block B, C, and D, and then one topic from block E. And you can choose whichever topic you want, the one that's most relevant for you. We're just giving you a set of minimum numbers that we think should be included. So, for example, let's say you can select um, curriculum planning and development assessment and evaluation teaching and learning for, from basic topics, then quality assurance and evidence-based medicine from quality topics, and another two from humanities, another two, two for environment, and then whichever one you prefer from other topics. And this leads to, oh my god, my math is a total of nine, if I'm not mistaken, mandatory topics that you have to select, but beyond those nine, you can pick from any any of the blocks. Uh, so this three two 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 one rule applies always. Um, 
you get to select which topics those are going to be. And beyond those, you get to select from any blog whatsoever. There is absolutely no restriction. Uh, we think that this actually might uh, sound a, a bit complicated at the beginning, but once you actually go and start building your agenda, it's, it's very, very, very simple. Uh, and it's quite helpful for you as well because it gives you a structure to follow. Uh, it just, I think, we really think that it makes your life easier. And it also gives you at the same time a lot of leniency in what you're going to discuss. So actually, if you have any questions about it, make sure to leave us a comment or contact us after as well. We'd be very, very happy to answer your questions also at the end of the workshop as well. Perfect. Um, so yes, we will share uh, both documents after uh, the, this webinar is over. So let's go a little bit of uh, what has been aimed so far. So um, the first one ever was done during the um, pre-America's regional meeting in 2018 in Paraguay. So um, this is a, um, a quick look of what was the agenda like. Of course, it is a three days workshop as, as Katerina was explaining. Um, in here, we were developing the framework. So uh, we had the idea, but it wasn't applied 100% yet. Um, but uh, what were the comments or who participated in this in this first workshop? So actually it was a really uh, small group. Um, you have in the top right, Jimena, she's the RA for the Americas. Uh, she was facilitator. Uh, together with Renzo, who is in the top left in, in gray t-shirt, and with me. The three of us facilitated this amazing six um, people, medical students, from different parts of the Americas. Of course, this was the first AMET ever, and here we uh, also provide a space for um, participants to give the input about how they felt um, was the the um the workshop if they actually got um the skills and the tools they needed for advocacy in a, in um local and national level and the good thing and something we um we were forgetting is that we have developed also some impact assessment tools so basically participants in any aimed workshop will need to fill a pre and post assessment um form which um they will um uh, they, they they have to to feel with information of what is the specific local medical education issue they want to address and in the post assessment they will develop a little bit of what was the plan they um they found or they uh, they developed during the three days workshop and um, also right now we are implementing a tracking sheet so basically we we are following what is happening with these participants after one month, and after six months of the workshop. So this was the first AMET. And let's see what happened in the second one. Yes, so the second one was following the AMET at the uh, it was at the March meeting. Um, and it was facilitated by Lena, the SCOMI development assistant, as well as Jimena, the SCOMI RA for the Americas. Um, yes, and also uh, Katarina, the, uh, the SCOMI regional assistant for Europe, and myself. And we had seven participants from different regions uh, of our federation. And uh, can you go back to the to the agenda yes thank you so as you can see from the agenda we had like a variety of workshops uh, of sessions um, from the different uh, from the different blocks that we have seen in the framework uh, so the first day was medical student centered and they have learned about uh, student representation, being meaningfully involved within the medical education system and the tools that you can use, the, uh, use for that reason, uh, spe specifically advocacy. And the second day was more of uh, medical school centered where we talked about quality assurance, accreditations of medical schools, educational strategies, and also uh, social accountability of medical schools. And in the third day, it was more of humanities and other topics related, such as uh, health policies, human resources of health, and external representation. And if you can notice from the, from the agenda, at the end of each day, we had uh, a session for, for participants uh, to allocate more time 
to develop plans and projects they can uh, implement later on after the workshop. So we were uh, closely supervising participants to, devel uh, to develop activities they can do regarding a medical education issue they are facing on a local level. Yes, so it was a very productive time with seven participants, but also we had fun and, and we had a really good time together. If you can see from this photo, like we were trying to mimic a dragon because we were assigned a dragon room. However, it didn't work. Sorry, Daenerys. But uh, I can read to you like many uh, testimonials from participants uh, and to see they have like a really good feedback. For example, one said that the AMED gave me the tools to understand the role that we as students have in our medical education, which is really important for a medical student to know. The first thing is they, they have a, a role in medical education, not just as subjects, but also as uh, decision makers. And they have really, and the AMED allows us to learn so. The second one said mm, it had it has offered me new skills and tactics to induce change in medical education, which is also like being implemented by those uh, time allocated to to participants to develop act to develop projects and plan of actions, uh, and to put to practice the knowledge they have learned uh, during the sessions in the morning. And third one said, in my opinion, a very important part of the workshop when we shared about the educational system we had in each of our countries, which gave us each of us idea about what good and bad about our educational systems. And it's also not only a, a self-centered um, plan, uh, developing plan of actions time, but also it's an, an opportunity to exchange ideas between the participants and to inspire one another to develop activities and to learn from each other experiences. And last but not least, um, yes, this one said, I made friends, I learned a lot and I found a nice space to share my ideas. It was very good to have people with so much love for medical education, who I admire and who inspired me to do great things in my home country. And it's really, really important like to, um, to have a space where you can not only express yourself, but also learn from one another and to, to develop activities from different perspectives so you can tackle your medical education issues from different experiences and from different backgrounds. And not only, uh, this is not, uh, this is not the only AMED that's going to have that has happened, and the next one is going to be in the pre-August meeting at the, in Montreal. So, who is ready uh, for this workshop? Can you move to the uh, to the agenda, Pablo? Yes, thank you. So, as you can see from the agenda, we have like a, another variety of uh, sessions that would be more focused on developing advocacy projects regarding the different medical education issues our regions might be facing, whether through accreditation of medical schools or uh, developing our curricula or human resources for health or developing health policies. So, it would allow more times for more time for participants to focus their pro the advocacy projects and to to develop plan of actions according to to the medical education issues they are facing and i hope to see you there all right and before we uh i think finish our slides i would like to quickly mention Another workshop that we're also having as SCOMI, the SCOMI International Team, uh, in this upcoming pre general assembly for the August meeting. Uh, and to go along with the theme of social accountability and health beyond the hospital, which is the theme event actually of the August meeting, uh, we um, submitted the proposal for a workshop specifically on social accountability and it was accepted. So we're not going to have only one SCOMI workshop this time, but two. Um, and the second workshop is implementing social accountability in medical schools, or you can call it the social accountability workshop. It's entirely the same. There's no problem. And this workshop is uh, has one main purpose, and that is to give to participants all of the necessary tools they need to become uh, informed and, and empowered advocates for social accountability in their own setting. 
uh, which is either medical school or health professions, uh, other health professional educational institutions. It, it's, it can be, again, adjusted to not just medicine, uh, at least this particular one. Um, so the workshops, again, about three days. It includes a variety of sessions that all relate to social accountability and its implementation. It draws great inspiration from the toolkit, the social accountability toolkit that was developed last term. And the coordinator for that was actually Steinche, who's here at the webinar today. So let's remind ourselves to give another applause for, for this wonderful, truly wonderful work, which has inspired a great uh, collection of actions. Uh, and the, this particular workshop is also in line with our uh, global external focus area of social accountability. It is part of the objective, objectives that we set during the beginning of the year. Uh, so if you're remotely interested in social accountability and ensuring health equity, education equity, and just bringing uh, high quality um, and professional healthcare to everyone, then this workshop is probably for you. Um, either way, we have two great selections for anyone who's remotely interested in medical education as a whole. You can see some of the agenda. We will also be sending the proposal for this workshop at the end of the webinar, uh, and we'll share everything with you. But keep in mind that it's something new. It's something that hasn't been uh, done before. You can be part of the beginning of this movement, which will hopefully have a ripple effect. Uh, and hopefully we'll see you in other of those in, in Quebec City. Um, so now it's time for questions. So please, if you have any questions, uh, write them down in the comment section. Uh, meanwhile, we're going to just give some short um, reminders. Give me a second. OK. Uh, so remember, if you want to apply to any of the um, of these workshops, you can do it until the 16th of May. So you have uh, some extra days to do it so to do to do so. Um, also, um, some nomis have approached us and ask, uh, what if I want to host and aim it in my NMO? So, so far, as um, this is the first year that AMETs have been implemented, we are just hosting AMETs in pre regional meetings or in general assemblies. Uh, we are aiming that in the next term or in the next months, we will have the, um, some regulations ready and um, any NMO will be able to host. Uh, the idea is that at this point, um, any NMO will be able to host rather a TMET or an AMET. And of course, in the AMET, we will have a special tracking of the participants. Um, yeah, so let's check. There's not questions. All right. Perfect. Just remember um, that the, you can apply until the 16th again. Uh, it's going to happen on Quebec City on the 29th of July until um, the 2nd to the 2nd of August. And I think there's no question. There, there's no any question. So um, we will still be um, really happy to answer any question by email. Um, all this presentation and materials and the work behind the AMET is, of course, done and brought to you um, because of the work of the international team, which I would like to thank. Of course, not all of us could be present here, uh, but um, remember, you can always approach to your regional assistant to um, any question to our development assistant for um, any workshop and, of course, our GA. Um, so I think that will be all for now. Thank you so much, and we will be sharing the links to um, all the documents and um, any other information through email. Okay. Uh, so thank you very much, Maru, uh, Kat, Stenji, for for being here, and see you all really soon. Bye bye. Goodbye, everyone. See you in Canada.